This week on Bros, Bibles, and Beer. That's it. You were told no more. <laughs> Three. I don't know many churches that have like eight million sitting in their pocket to go like, hey, we can do this. Wherever we go from here, and it could get dark. Downers only. It's going to be a powerful moment in our family. That's yeah. That's what I know it will be. Our cycles synced up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's yucky. You guys menstruated at the same time. In the absence of like absolute certainty, faith should fill in the gap. Right. Yes. That's what I was trying to say. It works. You need to be better with your words. Yeah. Use your words better, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to Bros, Bibles, and Beer. It's episode 245. This is Jeff. Zach, how's it going? I'm in the mood for some authentic frontier gibberish. Frontier, the airline? Uh, <laughs> Andy? <laughs> well, so much for that collab with uh, Donut Media. Yeah. Sports donations for your kids, I totally regret it. <laughs> Yeah. Let, let me say real quick, my my son, my youngest son's on a baseball team and we're going to Cooperstown and we have we all have to get donations. And it's a lot. Fundraising? Yeah, selling squares for the NFL season, which I I'll, I'll do it. Maybe you guys will, but I asked a few people uh to go big and I'm like, mm. I only want you to give if you can afford it. <laughs> Nothing like that. <laughs> Selling it's, squares and souls since 2024. Yes. And uh, it was if like, you can give $5, it uh, would be great. It was more like, hey, good luck. Uh, Can't yeah. do it. I'm like, I should have just asked for one square. But I was, I was trying to go big. Didn't happen. And now I have complete regret. Because now I probably won't even get those few people that I asked to go big. So that gives me PTSD from when I was in the All American Boys Chorus, which is the fact that Beta. <laughs> what? And I was I'm doing a jogathon. So lost. I had to go door to door. My mom made me go door oh, yeah. to door to raise money. And I don't even know why I'm doing a podcast because I hate talking to strangers and I'm talking to potential, yeah. potential millions. Right. Um, and, uh, but yeah, PTSD. All good though. Hey, I don't do it anymore. There's nothing worse though than going up to someone's front door, knocking on it, interrupting them, and then saying, "Can you give me some money?" Yeah, and you're 11. Yeah, that is the worst. And you suck at communication. I would have been better off just praying <sighs> Thanks, for money to come in than sending a spending time putting an email together and sending it out. That was terrible. I, I feel awful. I almost I I actually somewhat apologize to the person who's like, can't do it. Good luck. And I'm like, so sorry. That was we're not so connected. Just send them a link to this podcast episode and they'll do the work for you. <laughs> yeah. If you just want to say it straight into the camera, let them know. I, I would have been better off just telling my son. This is your moment. Nah, forget about it. <laughs> All right, well, and Andy's plea didn't work last week. No, so uh, I was you, curious. I you had checked, a plea? Yeah, I checked to see if any of our uh, listeners would recognize what my... Mm. Do you guys remember what I said last week? Something about donuts and... Pudding. Nudge, nudge nation. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, there's a thing on Donut Media called where they, they refer to it as wink, wink nation. This was, you know, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. It was a bit of a stretch, I admit, but um, I'll keep working on catchphrases. That's why you're the tallest in the room is because all you do is stretch, Andy. Yeah, you're welcome. that was a stretch. Woo. All right. So before we go further, Andy, who are we and what do we do? And who is the next producer to get fired? Welcome to Bros, Bibles, and Beer. We are the podcast where we have serious talks about faith and culture without taking ourselves too seriously. I am Andy McCraw with my friends and co-hosts, Jeff Pearson Zach Crater. We are joined by a producer, rookie producer extraordinaire. He's already been fired once, Tyson Neal. Hello, uh, Tyson. Hello, hello. Yes. And uh, so, Tyson, if, it, if you, well, listener and viewer, if you don't like anything that's happening tonight on this episode, it is 100% Tyson's fault. <laughs> I feel, love this. I feel like we just picked up Tyson from M his NPR job. <laughs> it's definitely not hey, me. Hey, this is Tyson. Uh, uh, hey, guys. Uh, hey. Yeah, so we've been... <laughs> We've been producing for about 
uh, 30 seconds now. And uh, <laughs> doing good. It's been really great. Doing <laughs> doing good. Play by play. <laughs> you, <laughs> do, <laughs> you do sound a little bit like Ricky Bobby when he gets his first interview. <laughs> I don't know. Car, 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 roll, my hands. car roll, roll, real, roll real good. <laughs> don't, don't know. To do. You can just put your hands down. Uh, yeah. Just put them down by your side. Thank you for joining us. It's good to have you. And, yeah, honored, uh, and I appreciate that you're not drinking our beer tonight. Thanks. <laughs> He's got a sparkly water listener. Who knew he had such a problem that he had to abstain? Ooh. Yeah, well, it's more for us. That's cool. <laughs> um, but be prepared. Uh, Tyson, be very prepared. If and when you get fired during the episode, don't take it personally. I mean, take it personally. And uh, just know that you are one in a long line of producers who have and will be and will forevermore be fired. But you need to get over it. Yeah. Okay. Can I, can I give you guys some good news? Oh, some good news. Did you have a question? No, no, no. I was going to ask if you have... Uh, do you have any good news? <laughs> let's hear it. Okay, we'll, we'll <laughs> edit that out. Let's, yeah. get, let's go ahead, get the good news. And go. Hey, uh, I've been feeling the need for some good news lately. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> I'm glad you asked, Andy. Church pays off nearly $8 million of community's debt. Whoa. Co- community's medical debt. Hands, feet, and wallet of Jesus, according to the Christian Post. A teenage boy known for attending church alone without his parents had an opportunity to share the gospel with his father after the church partnered with a national program to pay off around $8 million of the community's medical debt. The Altar Fellowship is a non-denominational church in Johnson City, Tennessee, led by Pastor Maddie Montgomery and his wife, Candace. Montgomery is an evangelist and author of Scary God and Lovely Things in Ugly Places. I have no idea about those books, but check them out. How how big is that church? Does it give you any sense? You probably don't know. That's a Christian post. They don't give you the details you You don't get any details. Um, I'm just kidding. I'm contractually obligated to crap on the Christian post every time I read (laughs) something from them, even though we use them a lot. So thanks. Uh, Montgomery said a friend of his called to share that he'd had a dream of one day paying off people's medical debts. The pastor described his friend as a businessman within the community who, quote, loves the Lord and came up with the idea to help people through an organization known as RIP Medical Debt. So what's the name of the church? Montgomery. Nope. Altar Fellowship, non-denominational in Johnson City, Tennessee, Altar Fellowship. They paid. They cannot be the only the Altar church, Fellowship. The church paid? The church partnered with the our, their organization that is RIP okay. Medical Debt. Rest in peace. I think it's awesome. I, I'm just, uh, I that don't know. That is good news. I don't know how many churches, that's why it's interesting to see. I, I don't know how the breakdown is. I don't know how many churches that have like 8 million sitting in their pocket to go like, hey, we can do this. Eight million dollars. That's a crazy. And also, Johnson City, Tennessee, sounds like a really small town. So they negotiated it down. They did not spend. Who have some serious medical problems? They did not spend eight million dollars. Ah, oh, so here we go. As Montgomery explained, the organization negotiates with collectors to buy the legal right or claim on a debt. According to the pastor, the combined medical debt within the six counties closest to the church was about eight million dollars. And the church was able to buy all the debt for fifty grand. So, oh, good news! And so, it could be a smaller church, and they fifty grand is doable. And guess what, people? If you're if you're serious, like when you go in to do medical things, advocate for yourself because if you just tell them what's the cash price, what if I go outside insurance? You yeah. can negotiate the hell out of those places in a way that you would not believe possible. So, there's was, a there's a little pro tip. Was that a uh, pun intended there to negotiate the hell out of Ooh, their prices. Well done. I think that's what they did. Yeah, I that, think so too. That conversation has been going around about hospitals actually putting their prices, you know, public. So how much is that MRI? Yeah. Nobody knows. The pastor said his church is located in a rural er- rural area where many residents live in poverty and struggle with addiction. While he's unsure if the church will do something like this again, he expressed that it is a joy to give and wish people didn't have to go into debt over medical expenses. Um, that, that kid that goes to church, um, his dad called him in and said, hey, that church you go to, it's called the altar, right? 
And the kid said, yeah. And the dad said, your church just paid off all my medical bills. Oh, dude. Wow. Um, and he was just really confounded by that. He thought, why did they do this? And his son got the opportunity to share the gospel with his father because of the giving of the church. That's pretty awesome. It doesn't look like a big church. I've got their website up. Um, and, and, but which, which means like even 50,000 might've been a stretch potentially for them. So it's pretty cool that, that they, that they went and oh, did yeah. this. Also Absolutely. props to them. They own the altar.org domain. Not bad. Well done. You guys, uh, altar fellowship, Johnson city, Tennessee, you're ahead of the game. They got to it right before the satanic death metal band could buy it. So uh, I feel like there's a, there's a devil band with altar in the name somewhere. Yeah, that's a, that is a really cool story, though. Um, You're welcome. Thank you. Wherever we go from here, and it could get dark. Downers only. I just wanted to set the tone. Say, hey, it's not all bad. Sometimes we, fl- so listeners, sometimes we fly by the seat of our pants, and and we don't have a set of core topics ready to go from, and we just go where the spirit leads us. Yeah, our pants have wings today. I think. They do have, well... Mine left me. We be flying. <laughs> <laughs> Our pants have wings. Uh, that's good. I like uh, that. So, since you brought this up about the church paying for somebody's bills... They're not going to sponsor your kid to go to Cooperstown, <laughs> okay? <laughs> <laughs> not going to happen. You, know, you beat Just me to the punchline. <laughs> <laughs> no, I... So I, I am a landlord. Caleb's been really sick. <laughs> I, I am a landlord, and uh, this month I get a phone call from a my tenant was having some financial difficulties. I think she lost her job, but I get a, a phone call, and it's a part of the Catholic diocese. But oh. I, I um, and they're like, "Hi, so and so reached out to us. I guess she's your tenant, and we're going to be paying um, the rest of her rent." For the month. Wow. Four days later, I received a check from, you know, it's part of the Catholic Church, but there was a name to it because I looked it up and they're everywhere. They're worldwide. I'm incredible. I'm like I'm talking to the guy and he's like, oh yeah, I used to live in California and I live in Idaho and yeah, we just, I volunteer and when people, I'm like, well, is this really going to happen? If somebody asks, it's going to happen. Whoa. I'm like, wow, Dude, that's that- amazing. That can be life changing stuff for people as well. Like if it was a bridge yeah. to you know move maybe probably to a different job and yeah, absolutely. Hmm. It's incredible. Lifeline is that's that's the word. Yeah, you know we we talk. What catches the headlines normally is bad news or an abusive pastor or whatever. We and yeah, we cover that stuff too, and that's important to bring into the light because you. With, I would like to see churches do a better job at sniffing those types of people out before they're on staff. Yeah. But it's nice. And I, I do believe, and so I'm going to say it because I do believe that uh, the church is, a, is on balance a way better, bigger force for good than yeah. bad. The problem is when it goes bad, it's terrible because you got like the weight of God and eternity and that, that can really blow up in a way that's terrible. But yeah. You know, if it bleeds, it leads, and that that applies to this podcast too. Sometimes, but it's important to know and to search for the things that spark joy. So, you know, we know if we get boosted views, this is really on you, uh, our listeners and viewers. If if you start really sharing this episode around, then maybe we can do some more positive things. Yeah, and if not, we're gonna have to resort to selling our bodies, like <laughs> Jeff is doing on behalf of his son. <laughs> Because his son won't go out and raise money. Jeff is on street corners. Yeah. And I've seen him and he should put more my, clothes on. My my son is on street corners Whoa. selling Whoa. golf balls. Oh. Okay, okay. <laughs> golf balls and lemonade. I got golf balls for you. <laughs> oh, are you if serious? You want, yeah, in my truck. Oh, well, I got lemonade for you. <laughs> <laughs> Tyson, you got anything? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll take yeah. We'll, hey, he'll take them. Absolutely. Uh He's like, but only pro V ones. I'm like, son, people will buy any golf ball that you have. Just go out there and work it and give them a free lemonade and they'll give you money. Um, it's amazing how many people just like, here's five bucks. I'll take a golf ball 
Yeah, I'll have a cup of lemonade. We're only whatever. allowed to have one fundraising story for your son per episode. <laughs> this is two. You are now banned for the next three episodes of any fundraising stories for your son. Yeah. All right. That's enough. Uh, I will share. The... So then share it. Okay. Well, we just had a major event in our family that happened. Yeah. Which was... What happened? Taking... Great. Are you going to cry? I'll try not to. Oh, no, man. please do. It's it a may sh- pod. <laughs> <laughs> it may show up. I hope it does. I hope it doesn't show up. Uh, we took our oldest to college and moved her in, and your son came along. Quite literally, came, went along for the ride out there as the two of them road tripped out to t- Texas. Backgrounder: Jeff's son and Andy's daughter have been dating for three years. Three years. A yeah. Lo- wow. A long time. Yeah. Three years. And so. Your son graduated last year. Last year, Andy's daughter just graduated, and yeah, go ahead. And so she's going to school in Texas at Baylor University, which Baylor I barely even know her. <laughs> the uh, I didn't I didn't know anything about it, but uh, until we until I got a chance to go out there, and after spending um, two or three days there. I texted a buddy of mine who has two, now three kids there at the same time. Good Lord, that's a lot of money. That's a rich dude. I told him, I was like, how are you doing this? And he just said, we just kissed our retirement goodbye. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But I just I just texted him. I was like, I get it. And he said, oh, you must be, without with no context, uh, I just said, I get, uh, I'm a Baylor, I get it. He goes, you must be at their orientation thing. And I was like, yes. And he goes, yeah, it's a, it's a great place. And, and um the students there, your, your sons and daughters will flourish, which is really cool. That doesn't change the fact that like taking your kid and dropping them off, you know, 1500 miles away, um, is any easier other than like, I try to take solace in the idea that she, that she will flourish, that she will be surrounded by, um, groups of like-minded and non-like-minded people who will challenge her in ways that she hasn't been challenged before. And, I will do make her a better person, make her a better person. And I'll kind of monologue in here a little bit, but the experience of taking my daughter to college has, um, and her just going away in general to college has made me rewind so many conversations and reactions that I've had in the past for other people who have said, Hey, yeah, my kid's going to college. Mm. My mm. reaction 100% of the time previously has been positive. That's so great. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. They got into insert whatever college name. Right. That's yeah. gr- Oh, I'm, I'm so happy for you guys. And, and looking back on, on, on that, I'm like, gosh, I had no idea that those parents are torn. They're totally torn. Yes. Thrilled for their kids that they can be a part of this. Right. And your whole family dynamic changes in an instant. And there's no going back. Like it will never be the mm-hmm. same again. And that part, you know, Lindsay, my wife and I have been, um, it's profound sorting out a little bit. We're, we've got, there's been a lot of people who are praying for us and checking in and, and which is good. And I'm not usually someone that would say like, Hey, I can feel your prayers. Jeff, Jeff remind me tomorrow to check in with Andy. Yes. Thank you. You you boys have been good about checking in with me, um, and they ruined the joke. And there were t- <laughs> there were two there were some tearful moments, of course, for sure, while we're out there, certainly. But um, like Lindsay and I both feel like we're doing better than we thought we would, and maybe it's because we've kind of done this in some phases. Um, the the first time when we went out to this like orientation thing, we dropped her off. We were there for two days, then we left, and she stayed for three days. And that one felt to us like more of the event. Like we we were driving in the car back to the airport, a mess. Just yeah. like mm. it was, it was so hard. And maybe some of that was cathartic, yeah. lot, you know, allowing us to get that out. And so we've done this in chunks. First child, daughter, that's big. Yeah, I mean, and again, you know, we had a house that was used to having four people, and and with our family of only four, you take 25% away on a daily basis and the dynamic is totally shifted. So now, our especially y- when it represents 80% of the family and it's gone to Baylor, that that's, 
That's wow. bad. Wow. That math. I, I just, yeah, I was. She was really smart. You know, uh, she's a Baylor. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, let me know when you're done. It's in my contract. No math in this podcast for me. So That felt like 4D chest. <laughs> my parents know how you feel because when I decided to take a class at Saddleback, so that, which is a community college, so that I didn't have to pay rent, multiple people were like, you guys must be so proud. Your son uh, is going to community college. Good for him. Did yeah. your mom drive you all the way to Saddleback and drop you off? I had my own car. Nice. But I didn't want to pay rent, so it's like, okay, I'll go to school. And I, I took a psychology class and the uh that was the only, I think the only class I finished because the teacher was very good looking. Oh. And so I'm like, I'm What just, was his name? Ooh, well done. <laughs> You're welcome, Chad. <laughs> he was the original high Chad. Five, high five. <laughs> the, I actually don't remember her name, <laughs> but <laughs> Oh, uh, that's good. I Thanks for a, tying that. I got a beta. There. I don't. <laughs> I got a beta. Okay. Yeah. The um. The, wait, wait. There is a silver lining to. Uh, I hate to. Which I'm okay with. The silver lining yeah. of yes, your daughter has gone away. Yeah. Uh, my son drove. They drove together, and he's literally dropping her off at Baylor, and then coming home with you guys. Yeah. And I'm like, so he's home yesterday or the day before. And I, uh, I'm realizing, wow, he's he hung out with some friends, but I, I think it was last night. He said, uh, or he's just sitting there, and I'm like, my gosh, he's he's home. Oh my gosh, my son's home, <laughs> and uh, I I'm like, hey, how's it going? And he's like, ah, oh, good, good. I'm like, work works good, and. <laughs> I'm like, did he start calling you by I'm your like, first name? <laughs> <laughs> it's good, Jeff. You know, Jeff, what do you need? Uh, no, but I'm like, <laughs> I'm kind of uh, busy right now, Jeff. If there's something that you want to say. In, in my head, I'm like, you know, I really need to start working out. He's going to be home. I'm like, hey, if I bought you, uh, you know, I know you kind of dropped your, your gym membership. Uh, what if I paid for it? Would you uh, go and work out with me? He's like, mornings or nights? I'm like, nights. He's like, yeah, I could do that. That's. Especially if you're, you're paying for it, I'm like, yes, oh, that's yes. Awesome. So Jeff's gonna get yoked. Yeah, you're right. That is a Dude. that is a silver lining for you, Jeff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, uh, did but, <laughs> can I tell you a funny story though? This is so weird. It's a weird story. Jeff, are you okay with it? You're gonna like it. But Tyson, did you just laugh from afar? <laughs> I'm sorry. You're fired. I, <laughs> <laughs> no, Tyson's already doing better in that when something makes him laugh. He, he laughs, laughs and Thank you can you. hear it. Thank you. It's I making know. the show better. <laughs> it's okay to laugh. I'm going to edit that out so you don't get the credit. But <laughs> oh, good. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Let, let's hear it. So um, maybe this was like subconscious coming through for both Christian, your son and I, but the day after I was trying to fix something on my car. It doesn't matter what it was, but anyway, I had, it required me to drive the car for like 30 minutes in a, a stretch so i drove down to san clemente mm -hmm. and i was like while i'm down here i'm just like in the back section of like some business park and there's this wide open cul-de-sac and i was like hold on let me press some buttons beep, 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 turn off all the nanny modes and then i just hit like three donuts <laughs> in the in the um cul-de-sac <laughs> and then took off and as i was driving <laughs> away i called christian and i was like Hey man, guess what I just did? <laughs> and he goes, "Guess what I just did?" And he sent me a video <laughs> oh, yeah. of him in yes. his truck hitting burnout donuts. Oh my gosh! No and then he said, "We're going to K one racing. You want to go?" And I'm like, "I'll see you there." <laughs> so we well, went to K one. I, I got a, I get wind of this. I have no idea why I did not tag along. You should have regrets. Man. Complete he, regrets. You know, my theology, won, the my way. theology doesn't leave a lot of room for like god ordaining things right now i mean it could change but that feels set up i mean that feels like god's like you guys need this yeah you guys need this and our cycles synced up yes <laughs> <laughs> yes the, the rumor is that is, yeah. that's yucky you guys menstruated at the same time in the in the same way i just yeah. thought it was hilarious they were burning rubber yes man that's how we like our emotions we need to get these emotions out somehow Man, horsepower, that's how we do it. Yeah, you haven't Well, cheers to that. Yeah. Cheers yeah. to cheers that. Cheers to that. A rump. I didn't get a harumph out of that guy. That's a negative thing. A rump. No, it's a green. Rabbit.
I thought harumph was like harumph, <clears throat> like a bah humbug. All know. right, th- side th- note. This goes back to my original Nobody comment knows. about frontier gibberish, which is from Blazing Saddles. Oh. But when there's a lot of like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's the agreement. And oh, then yeah. everyone's saying harumph, harumph, harumph. I didn't get a harumph out of Tyson. <laughs> Tyson, you wait, give me a harumph. Wait, hold on. Which, by the way, you cannot watch that movie in these days. Oh, or you can. It is. Can you? You can in front of your kids and with every in bomb and as it they is. start to cry and yeah. become shocked. Right. <laughs> also, Zach will watch anything in front of his kids yes, with I his will. kids. <laughs> there is no filter. The sheriff is near. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Uh. <laughs> my favorite ep- my favorite scene in all of space oh, balls uh, mm. is when they say that they've been combing the desert. <laughs> <laughs> they got the giant cat. Uh, they catch the guys are like, how's it going? And that dude stands up and he goes, man, we ain't found shit. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a pick. There is, there is. <laughs> That's a fantastic That was implied. Movie. Fantastic, <laughs> fantastic movie. There is like, the the lesson for the kids because I forgot how pervasive the N word was in Blazing Saddles when yeah. we watched it, and just seeing their shock. The lesson is, this is satire, and these are the bad guys. Like it is yeah. making fun. Mm-hmm. The N word isn't good. Racism isn't good. It's making fun of those people. Yeah, and I think so much of society today is geared towards like, oh, you just said the bad thing, and with no relation to what the context is. No. And the bad thing can expose the and the context of it can expose and just uh, and just neutralize the bad thing if the context is right. So it's worth chewing on. There's been a little bit of of training and brainwashing in our world to find the bad and everything. I mean, media is the worst, but. Just when we showed up here, the N word is bad. <clears throat> no, but I, I no. <laughs> yeah, let's just all agree on that one. Okay. It but, is, but not, just it's not great. <laughs> but just in general, the the topic, the overarching topic of finding something negative, and and that that word, yes, Sorry, got Jeff. you. <laughs> uh, but Zach, bef- you know, before we started this evening, I I brought up uh, you know the message from Sunday, and I'm like, ah, oh, there was something that kind of. You know, I thought, oh, I wonder what Zach thought about that. And I think, you know, it was about prayer and people being healed. And it was like, uh, am I am I just trying to find something like, oh, yeah, he'll rail against that. And I'm like, I don't why am I doing that? Because it's a good thing. Some there was prayer, somebody was healed. And that's that's great. Like lives were changed. In a good way. Wait, give a little more context. You're saying that in the message, there was a description mm-hmm. given a story. There was a description, yeah, and there was a story, and I believe it was in Africa. It was, I think it was a five-year-old child. Um, details might be a little off, but um, there was something, I don't know if it was a disease or if it was sickness there was or whatever. There was an infirmity that was healed. Yes. Yeah. And and I'm, I think some people... Because we want to find the bad, we want to push back on everything, like trolls just waiting for someone to say something. Even if you are neutral on it, you're like, "I'm going to push back on this." For what? I have no idea. Because it. Did you feel that when you were listening to the message? I th- well, no. I thought about because I know how some feel about prayer. Or God doing something. God did this. It was like, well, if God did that, then why doesn't God do this? And we've had that conversation before, but ultimately it's... And we will continue. Yeah, that will be an right. unending nut to try to crack. Never ending nut. By the way, if you're struggling with infirmity, go to uh, <laughs> hymns.com backslash bros and get yourself some blue chew and... Uh, well done. <laughs> We're not. Well, we would be sponsored maybe, by them. Maybe my theme song that I just sung fits. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, but I mean, go, go, going back to, I don't want to lose. We just steamrolled over. You get Jeff. what I said? I I missed it because I was thinking of my joke. <laughs> that said never ending nut. Oh. I sing it. Never ending. No, you guys. Yeah, it's fine. No, I, I amuse myself. <clears throat> yes. Oh, what's that? Buffalo Trace. 
<laughs> <laughs> Squirrel. Uh, but last week, Paul Gibbs, uh, talking about praying for his eczema, mm-hmm. septic eczema to yep. be healed. Within eight days, it's gone. I, I confess, like Jeff, when you brought that up, when you brought up, like, hey, what'd you think about that during the message? Right. I, it didn't throw me, but I confess that there would be a, there was a point in the not too distant past, in the midst when I was in the more uh, in the throes of deconstruction, in the throes of the negative aspect aspects and X. I'll let you guys ax me anything after I'm done with this. Acts 12, 17. The negative side of deconstruction, you can get stuck in a like, just burn everything down and shit on everything. Um, and I had a, a time of that. And so, but I've developed into this place of, I don't, I don't know. I'm okay with the questions. And reality might exist where, whether prayer is what healed Paul or whether it was mm-hmm. his mind focusing on it like hey i think this might be there might be something to this and his mind and his positive maybe that's the way the prayer works and focus yeah and all of it can be a part of what god is doing it doesn't have to be like oh you have a good you have a positive outlook on life that's not god no i think sometimes we everyone including deconstructed atheists we think of god as this singular individual watching us and it's like god isn't a contained one personification i mean we like to think of the person of jesus christ but what is god what is god what is the spirit of god it's this thing that is impossible to quantify and how that thing Mm. works Mm -hmm. just be hold your hands open to things and so when paul's talking about it i'm just glad he got healed yes whatever the reason and i don't i feel less of a need to Go well. Well, as long as we know, it definitely wasn't God because God doesn't work that way. Did, was this a factor in either of your reactions to that? Um, that just who who Paul presented himself as, like the type of person that he came across as, and in how you received or like just interpreted what he described there. Meaning, I've had people who I thought were crazy say. I was just healed one day. Right. Woke up and it was healed by Jesus. And that guy's a fool. And you're like, oh, credibility doesn't seem like it's there. Paul does And not, oftentimes it's not. It's not. If you drill down. It's not there because it's not there. Yeah. Um, and But Paul does not present that way at all. He's not overhyping. There's no hyperbole. There's no There's no exaggeration. It was just like, hey, this. I had th- this thing happened. I prayed. Then this thing happened. And that thing went away, and um, yeah. it it didn't. Yeah, it, that kind of I think is probably why I, I didn't react. It's like I can't explain what happened, but X we did X Y and Z, and I'm yeah. walking away healed. Yeah, nine days but later. But Paul is not somebody that's like you were saying, Andy. He he doesn't come off as people like the more Bethel types, where they're praying over a dead baby for days yeah. and and people end up getting hurt and just their faith some people destroyed because we've been told yeah. your faith will heal this baby and it doesn't happen so it's like that's the the one side of it and the other side is sometimes healing seems to happen hold on we got a little question don't worry oh, sorry, about right. it we'll thank fix you it. Thank, thank you tyson you. perfect tyson is doing great listener and viewer <laughs> He's going to get invited back despite being fired. Yeah. Okay, but my two cents is, wouldn't you say that's faith? I mean, it's the believing of these. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, you, you guys are talking about, I was reading a verse on doubt, and there's so much doubt that you have about your faith and your walk, and is it's normal as a human to doubt things, right? Yeah. And how God moves, but I don't know. I just, two cents. Yeah, I but, I think that's a good point. Faith, I think so much of Christians' reaction to the enlightenment of like, hey, guess what? Science can explain everything. And I don't think that's true. But yeah. at, at the time, it's like, oh, guess what? The, you know, going back to the earth, hey, the earth doesn't go, the sun doesn't go around the earth. The sun, we go around the sun. And guess what? That's not even it. There's way more to the universe. And like literally 
the church killed people over those declarations. Right. But that seems so silly now. And then the enlightenment happens. And so the atheists say, hey, we don't need God. We can explain everything. And the Christians react by trying to prove God in every way. And that's yeah. where mistakes can happen, where you you substitute certainty for faith, um, which we have talked about before. But it's worth, I, Tyson, that's everybody, a good yeah. point. It, it, sh- it should be the bridge there, I think, is maybe what, is that what you're sort of alluding to, Tyson, is that in the absence of like ab- absolute certainty, faith should fill in the gap? Right. Yes. That's what I was trying to say. Good words. <laughs> you said it. No. You, but, you said it. I just want to make sure I'm understanding what you're saying. Sorry, yes. I'm not trying to no, ma- you, mansplain for you. No. Let me, oh, L1, everybody, let me speak for <laughs> Tyson just, really quick. No, that was better. What you meant to say, Tyson, was... <laughs> Andy is so used to the corporate meeting structure that Andy just took your idea and like, <laughs> and now we're all going to remember it as Andy's idea. Good job, Andy. Guess who's getting promoted, bitches. <laughs> 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 I love it. I'm now head podcaster, <laughs> chief <laughs> podcaster. I hate when you cor- play your corporate ways on our podcast. You love it, and I'm reporting you to HR. Bitch. So what I what I what I think you're really <laughs> saying uh, is so stupid. Back so back to what Andy had said before this uh, station break is I think everybody is, and I don't remember what Andy said uh, is everybody. <laughs> I think is connected in the Holy Spirit and someone like Paul, um, who, you know, how did you take you know, like what Paul said? And he, he seems pretty normal and he's just, I think he's just living a faith driven life and the Holy Spirit. He just, he's not thinking about, I should pray. It's just, those things are happening. I don't know if that's why he was healed of his, what was it? He never was healed of it. Cystic. Oh, Andy and I think you're talking about the Apostle Paul, I think. No. Right? Oh, yeah. That's who I thought you were talking about. Yeah. Who are you talking about? Paul Gibbs? I'm talking about... Paul Gibbs. Holy mackerel. Yeah, I thought you were talking about Paul in the Bible. Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. What? (laughs) You need to be better with your words. Yeah, use your words better, Jeff. Yeah. (laughs) I still have... But anyways, regardless, (laughs) Paul... I'm I'm 51. (laughs) So if you struggle with infirmity, is that all? Go to <laughs> hymns.com slash bros. <clears throat> so you're saying Paul Gibbs. Yes. Being healed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And at the time it sounds like it was a chi- very childlike faith. Like he didn't have right. the baggage of the knowledge of the way things might work or the possibilities but of things. He's like, Hey, let's give this Paul a shot. seems to be a person who's just literally walking in faith. He may have, he may have doubt, but he's like, I'm just going to, I'm just moving forward. I'm, I'm, this is how I live. And he's just, he's living by faith and he's living, he's created a world where he's being led by the Holy Spirit. We're going to this country, we're going to this country, we're talking to these people, getting connected. And ultimately that turns into some really good things. And I think with, if God made us, there's got to be some things inside of us that could actually heal us almost hmm. instantaneously. Like That's there a has trippy thought. there has to be, so there's got to be something with uh, we're going for it, and all of a sudden something happens that's miraculous. And you're like, yeah. how did that even happen? You didn't know medicine, know any of this, but it happened. It's like there has to be something inside of our bodies that God has put there. If, if like, hmm. uh, I can't put Maybe. my finger on it, but. I think there's, there's something there. Maybe. There's a great book that I've mentioned once upon a time. The Bible? That is not the Bible. Uh, but is it's it called the, expect- notebook? the Expectation Effect. The Notebook. Mm. Yeah, Ryan Gosling. Oh, so hot. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, these are bad side Tyson, your mic is on. <laughs> Sorry. Bad- Tyson, your mic is on. Bad side <laughs> your notes, Your mic is guys. on, Tyson. <laughs> these are bad it's, side notes. Your, your mic is on. <laughs> the Expectation... That was... The expectation effect, okay. and it goes through scientific studies about the what, what basically name it. the The bad version in church culture is name it and claim it, sort of like, or the secret, like will it to happen? Just, um, yeah, you can make it happen. The crazy thing is, there's truth to it, and it's backed up by science, and it's it's not a like, hey, you can heal yourself from anything, but what you expect to happen. A small example is you don't, you get a shitty night's sleep 
and you wake up in the morning and you're like, oh, this is going to be a terrible day. Mm. You're going to have a terrible day. True. And it, it sounds trivial, but literally the people, and it's they've done studies on this and stuff that is more impactful for day-to-day -day life, including being healed. And I think prayer taps into this too, which is like setting yourself up for success. It doesn't mean it's going to happen, but it will mean it's more likely to happen. Where I've seen Paul last week talked about no, Paul from the Bible. I was thinking that. Last Thank you. And by the way, that book is not a Christian book. So if if you're like a super Christian, uh, if you're you can benefit if you are a Christian, but if you're somebody that is more agnosticy and doubtful, you're going to get a lot out of it. It's it's just like data, 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 data. The negative Sorry. part of go that ahead. is uh, people who t go around talking about manifesting all over the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. I just, I'm manifesting. I'm manifesting wealth. I'm manifesting the life I want to lead. Do you manifest? Does your wife will Jeff, manifest? Jeff puts the man in manifest. <laughs> and, um, I think that's, that can, actually that shifts into like some new age thinking as well. Or in our context, when God is, when the language of God is behind it and then it doesn't happen because inevitably we all die. Gravity happens. Yeah. It it can be earth shattering. The thing that I was going to say was Paul kind of described these different, uh, these typical different paths that Christians tend to take. One is like, God, I want to go do all these things. Bless me while I go do all these things. The other version is, God, what are, what are the things that you want me to go do? I want to go do the things you want me to go do and, and bless me while I go do the things mm -hmm. that you want me to do. And there is it feels like there can there can be a delicate balance between what you've described of of even just positive self talk, um, but uh, creating self fulfilling prophecies, yeah, so to speak. Yep, like you said, I'm gonna have a crappy day, but there is science behind that stuff. You're not wrong. You know, the recently since school just started, my girls have really had a tough time with school. I mean, just with teachers and there's been a lot of negative, there's a lot of negative baggage there yeah. in high school. And I found myself and even especially tonight, because we, most of us were there. My son was still working, but I like not using r the religious speak. It was just like, yeah, you know, you know, bless this high school year and that, you know, it's a fresh year. My girls would, you know, have uh, a, a good, a good year, a positive year and yeah. make good connections and new friends and, and, you know, leaving it at that. But there's, a, as we're talking, I believe there's something to that, like putting it in their head, in their heart and knowing like dad's dad wants this. I'm going to act like, you know, well, this, I don't really care, but in the back of their head, there's like, okay, Dad thinks this is good. Maybe we should give this a go. So I, that's my hope and and literal prayer that you know this would be a good year in school and I would manifest a oh. good year for them in high school. That's the least Christian thing you've ever said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jeff. I think next you week you need to ask <clears throat> the Lord to manifest it on the behalf of your children. Jeff, next week you're on this couch. <laughs> yep. <laughs> The atheist just, agnostic. You need couch. to learn your Christianity. <laughs> We're just going to have the uh, two towers over there. And Jeff, you'll have so much room to play on this couch, and I think you're going to love it, dude. It is. <laughs> it, it is. It is important that your that your kids see your heart for them, though, and that oh, like they recognize oh, certainly the your hopes for them. And, and I think you're right. Like even in the moment, may it, though it may not be like <laughs> received as warmly as you'd hope it would be. Like that's, it's, it, it's in there somewhere, right? It, it's, it's foundational. <laughs> the it, seed has been planted. True. And I, I feel like it's, it's if my daughters were inside of a house and I was knocking on the door and they're opening it, they're like, it, it's you. I love you. And then they shut the door and you're, and then it's like, knock, knock, knock. And then they open the door again. And, and it's like, over time, it's like, dad never, dad never left. Yeah. Dad never gave up yeah. that like later on in life and that's all i'm wanting it's like mm. want that the seed was planted a long time ago watered 
and I'm going to keep fertilizing and it's and it, this is getting grosser, Jeff. Some somewhere Just it's wrap it up. going to be a power. It's going to be a powerful moment in in our family. That's yeah. That's what I know it will be. So I'm just I'm just waiting for them to not ignore me. Well, <laughs> high school's <laughs> tough, dude. It wouldn't be this podcast without me trying to make this about me. Um, but I've apologized to my parents multiple times. Just really. Yeah, because has it ever sunk in to them, or they ignore you? I would, like you I, ignored them as a kid. No, I just had forty years in the wilderness. I had my own forty, <laughs> 40 years in the, in the wilderness, wilderness as an adolescent, and um, they're th- our family has good genes. They're probably going to live forever, <laughs> but however long they live, it's going to be less because of what I put them through in <laughs> in high school and then after high school. Um, but yeah, you mentioning you put the time in and it, it's all you didn't use touchstone, but it's like a touchstone that even if it's not as bad as it, me, or even if it's worse, if you put that time in, they're more likely to come back to that anchor point and be like, couldn't be worse than Zach. Yeah, it can be. Your kids are great. Yeah. I only did meth once, on a, <laughs> which I've never told my mom. So yeah. on, <laughs> only once on Thursday. Saturdays <laughs> was consistent. <laughs> yeah, That's good. That it is good. <laughs> what? I don't just, know. Just, just ruin it. <laughs> full, full, <laughs> no, full circle. <laughs> full circle. Being positive. It's very good. Bringing the Holy Spirit, and good things do happen. And if and if there's challenges, you're still you're not waiting to be defeated. Well, that. I, I agree with you, Jeff. Thank that, you. Thank the you, description. <clears throat> oh, I guess I don't agree with you then. <laughs> <laughs> Screw you, Jeff. You don't know what you're talking about. I'm rubbing it off was, on him. It, it I, was just so. Oh, Jeff likes what I just said. Then fine. I say it <laughs> otherwise. Yes. It was just so subtle. Well, you've got me thinking, Jeff. This is my thinking voice. Mm, okay. Oh, NPR. Here we go. But what it made me think about. Was I will. It bros, I will, I will, go ahead. Beer. The second time for the evening, oh, first time on the podcast where I'm quoting the uh, the the poet musician Stephen Wilson Jr. He's got that song mm. called "Twisted," and that chorus of it says, um, "God is good, life is twisted," mm. and it like gives these descriptions like uh, there's a hurricane that came through, destroy the the home is the home is missing, but the family's safe. Mm-hmm. God is good life is twisted. And, uh, and I think that's true. Like we, we recognize those things like to, it, yeah. it is concentrating on the goodness of God in the midst of what seems like really hard things because we believe that the goodness of God will win out eventually. It's a, it's a good picture. So in the midst of like our kids, like what you described was continuing to knock. Right. Hey, it's, it's not easy right now. But God is good. Eventually, the fruit will blossom. Yeah, Bloom. Uh, I, I would Bloom. tie. I would tie that Happen. back into fruited how I and came to believe is looking back. It was like God was always knocking. I just all these moments throughout. I your just life. wanted to ignore it and do my own thing. Yeah. So I feel like the the super like the worst case scenario version of this. And to make it which this? super biblical, which this of what you said, the reference to life, God, is, life, is, life twisted. is twisted. You can imagine some of the stories of the first martyr, Stephen. Was Stephen the first martyr? He's so a I famous look one. It up. Just kidding. <clears throat> but Stephen in the Bible got martyred, and literally they're, they're willingly going to their deaths for what they believed was the the best cause ever. And I could imagine them having that. It's that's the upside down logic of the kingdom of God is sometimes God is good. The world is twisted means you lose your life and you, you lay it all down. Yeah. And, and Jesus being the ultimate example of that forget Stephen. Yeah. Forget Stephen. I said it. Tyson, did you look it up? And it was Stephen. Well done. <gasps> Tyson looked it up. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Tyson looked it up. Get him a Tyson new contract. <laughs> Tyson, you're rehired Tyson. First producer to ever look something up, by the way. Can we mark this moment in history? Yeah. First producer. To it's going to make it up. hurt so much more when we fire you again. Yeah. Dang it. But Jesus saying. But the rehiring is so sweet. Long-term yeah. contract, 10 days. <laughs> 
take this cup from me. Fulfill it. Yeah. I'm just gonna plow on while you guys. Whenever you guys are I don't done, know if it, I'm I, still... I know what you're saying, but I don't. I wonder if that's the same concept as as God is good, life is twisted. It's in the ballpark. Maybe they're kissing cousins. Yeah, why don't you de- why don't you guys debate that? that? Might That'll be, be fun. <laughs> that might. God is good, life is twisted when cousins find love. And they bring a beautiful baby into the world. That's right. That's right. That might actually work in this scenario. Okay, and sorry. It, and if it's second cousins, it's Apology legal. Apology accepted. It's legal. It is. Uh, I mean, I've heard. Yeah. I'm not going to do anything with that knowledge. Yeah. In, in, general, in general, like I think the spiritual maturity of, of being able to come to the place where you can live with that tension of God is good, life is twisted. Um, man, that's, that's a good place to be because we encounter infinite variations of life is twisted. Mm. And, and I think that us trying to wrap our heads around God's goodness in the middle of that and like seeking where God's goodness is in the middle of those things is the harder part in all of that. It's easy to see the life is twisted part. It may not always be easy to see the God is good part. A hundred percent. Okay. You... you guys know about the Shroud of Turin? <laughs> Is that it? Uh, Assassin's Creed? <laughs> you guys know about the... <laughs> That's Assassin's Creed's video game. I think I did a side quest to get the Shroud of Turin. <laughs> and when I did that, I was able to add uh, three more daggers to my quiver. Andy, you're way cooler than your voice lets on. <laughs> video games are okay now. They're not... You know, I don't play enough video games being anymore. Being a nerd is cool. By I, the way, all this talk about mourning and stuff, I was going to say, and so I will now. <clears throat> you guys are in a little bit of mourning with the college stuff. Yeah. It's sup- a, a mourning pro tip for the listener is sometimes you feel good in the midst of a terrible thing. Like before we started, I yeah. was talking to your wife and she's like, I, I feel really good right now. And she, and kind of like, I don't know how I feel about feeling good right now because i just wasn't feeling good about it kind of a thing yeah it's okay it'll circle back but just appreciate the highs and don't ignore when you need to be low yeah and if your husband you know i'm speaking for a friend if your husband needs to bury himself in the god that is xbox series x (laughs) for an abnormal or playstation for an abnormal amount of time because you just need to lose yourself yeah you know morning is takes on different shapes for different people you don't want to stay there forever, but uh, giving allowance to like, this is how I am mourning right now. And also recognizing when you're mourning that way so you can communicate it. So mm. it, You're right. It does pop up when you're not expecting it. And the part that I didn't share was like waking up feeling terrible on Sunday morning. Um, and the trippy part is I woke up and fortunately had my phone next to my bed and got it out and started like writing song lyrics and had the melody and could picture the chords in my head. And later on that day, I like went and started to sort it out. You put it down. Yep. Nice. I didn't record it, but I have, I have the, I know, I know it's, it's, uh, I manifested it. Oh, awesome stuff. But it it was weird. Like I caught myself and feeling (laughs) that those, yeah filling those things and and wrote down like these verses that stuck out of my head so hopefully i can complete it i want to complete it tyson wants you to complete it tyson almost completed <laughs> you just agreed you just made a noise with your mouth and your body Sorry, the guys the word manifest i have an issue with that word but that's well that's for another pod oh okay which part of it the man part <laughs> <laughs> yeah or you just Proceed. hate festivals? There's way less festival and manifest than <laughs> most of us are expecting. Yeah. You know what? When we get together, when we have a live meetup someday. Manifest. Manifestable. Do you remember that? Tyson. He- do you remember that He-Man you're character? You're chewing gum, aren't you? <laughs> Sorry. You <laughs> no. <son of> Fired. <laughs> Fired. That's a, that's a fireable offense. <laughs> so gone. Just, no, no, it's, I'm kidding, dude. We're going to isolate that for their <laughs> it's the gone. ASMR uh, segment of the podcast. Just stick it Mouth underneath noise. the table. It's, it's, it's okay. You can <laughs> you can have your gum <laughs> and chew it too. Just not on something? the mic. You want to finish your thought? No, no, no. Just the uh, yeah. Just the only thing that was such a weird. I've I've actually never had that experience in my life. Um, so I'm glad that I didn't. It was a trip to to have 
like almost be dreaming these lyrics and and to wake up and like almost halfway like wake up uh, maybe even lucid dreaming and allow myself to finish these lyrics to the point of like two verses and then uh, and and the melody and the backing chords and then go back to sleep was was good and it was kind of cathartic um and it was tearful at the same time too and like, yeah so and Lin- like enough that i woke Lindsay up and mm. it was sweet but uh i i raised that because in the midst of like hey i think we're doing better than we can it does also feel like you're walking a tightrope and at any moment like you stumble and mm. and you get surprised by emotions yeah hey, i thought oh i thought i thought we were doing good and then something will strike you. You will see something that reminds you or triggers or, or some, right. something occurs that's right. different, that's out of the ordinary. Yeah. That you were used to. The the process or the the routine that was so familiar is gone. So like I <clears throat> mentioned the other day, uh, I've still not gone in Gwen's room. Mm. Haven't haven't poked wow. my head in there yet. But um, But we FaceTime and that's good. And it's cool to hear stories. I get little updates every day like, Here's the top cool, three cool things that happened to me today. Hmm. Nice. Oh, that's good. I like that. That's um, good. But you wanted to talk about the Shroud of Turin. Well, this is big Speaking news. Speaking of top three things that happened to you today. Big news. <laughs> okay. You should, should you explain what the Shroud of Turin, Turin even is? Have you heard of the Shroud of Turin? Isn't, is Do Turin you know in is? Europe? Is this a place? Don't make a wrong turn. Or is it a person? Comedy. I mean, I know Turin this is a place. This podcast has taken a turn for the worse. <laughs> turin. Oh, turin. oh, oh no. It's been okay. shra- shrouded. In the he, missed his, he was thinking about what he's saying, and he missed Andy. Andy gets the credit. I won't take credit for that, <laughs> that pun. Turin. <laughs> taking a bad turin. Um, some people have long thought that there's a shroud, there's like a cloth that was found uh, way back in the day, and people think that it was the cloth that Jesus was buried in. Mm. because there seems to be sort of an, an imprint of an okay. individual, a face. A, a face, a human. I have questions. And so the news dropped. This is from Relevant, who are picking it up from other people. But scientists now think the Shroud of Turin could actually be linked to Jesus. It's This has been, the Tur- Shroud of Turin has been a, sort of like a, a, a faith icon kind of a thing. Like, yeah. who is it? Could it be? Mm-hmm. Which some people... You know, love that. And a new study has found proof. By the way, do we have pictures of it? I do. Okay, well, read. You want to throw them up? Do he, you have he it? can do the... Uh, hold on, stand by. Yeah, I'm still sharing the screen. Yeah, you can go for it. So I don't know if... Maybe I can do this. Oh, there yeah. So this is... Go sideways. Bloop. All right. That's the Shroud of Turin, right? That's part of it. That's part of the X-ray image that that people did. Um, another another X-ray image. It, I'm thinking it does also look like one of the fallen kings from Lord of the Rings, right? It does. It could be who have been corrupted by the seven rings that were given to mankind. Yeah, yeah. Tyson, at the very least, Boromir. Tyson, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Is, yeah. Yes, I do. I do actually. Published in the journal Heritage, new research challenges the prevailing scientific consensus that the shroud is a medieval forgery, sparking renewed interest. Because that's basically what the scholarship is like. It's a forgery. You can kill the- somebody in medieval times. <laughs> uh, be ready, though. I have a clip oh, in a minute nice. uh, regarding this. Somebody at medieval times, like the restaurant? Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the Shroud of Turin housed in the cathedral- oh, It gets even weirder. <laughs> In the Cathedral of John the Baptist in Turin, Italy, answers your hey, question. The there place we go. That's what I thought. Has been the subject of intense scrutiny and fascination for years. The faint image of a man on the linen has led some to believe it's the miraculous imprint of Jesus' body. While the latest study doesn't dive into whether the shroud was actually Christ's burial cloth, it does suggest the artifact could be around 2,000 years old, which puts it in the, uh, in the lifetime thereabouts it st- it, this stands in stark contrast to a piv- pivotal car- carbon dating study from the late 1980s which dated the shroud 
to between AD 1260 and AD 1390. So they used to think it was a lot younger than it was younger. Yeah, right? they they the turns out it's it's much older than they thought. Mm. Is that what we're getting to? And yeah. it puts it in the ballpark of yeah uh, the the first the shroud's first documented appearance in France in the 1350s had led many to conclude that the artifact was a medieval creation meant to look authentic. Dude okay. does look medieval though, right? Oh yeah. What I mean, would you define shroud? Sheet, blanket, what type kind of material? Think, yes, all of it. Somewhere in between. Yeah. Imagine a body okay. covered uh-huh. with <laughs> cloth. All right. Mm. What's the cloth made of? Shrouds. It's, ma- uh, it's made of cloth. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cloth made of cloth. It's made of cloth. Yeah. <clears throat> Crystallography in Italy employed a novel approach by analyzing a small sample of the shroud using wide-angle X-ray scattering, which Is sounds his first fake. Name, first name Chris? <laughs> Chris. Crystallography. The team examined the structural degradation of the linen threads. Their findings revealed that the sample's age was fully compatible with linen dating back to A.D. 5574, suggesting that the shroud could actually be a relic from the time of Jesus. Wait, wait. A.D. 5574. Yeah. So if it's, you know, we don't know exactly when Jesus died. Like the the B.C. A.D. thing, which is outdated now. They don't use that. But I do. Zero. Yeah, I know. Which is fine. Uh, zero to, you know, 33 or whatever. I use ACDC. <laughs> yeah. I just use Keeps DC cool. Talk. Oh. oh. Yeah, I'm more Christian than you. Wow, You're on this couch. Both of you guys are yep, on this couch done. next time. Done. <laughs> I'm the Christian. You've been <laughs> served. <laughs> I got two gays for DC Talk? Uh, Why is my voice going to die? I'll tell you some stories <laughs> off uh, off the air. Uh, 100%. I know know people who know people. Oh, yeah, you do. All right, move it along, boys. Move it along. All right, so people are freaking out. Like, this is the new thing to prove that, you know, that Jesus died. Like, if anything, it proves if it was Jesus, like, nobody Mm. is disputing that Jesus existed and was crucified. Correct. Most people aren't. There was a minute where there were some people that claimed Jesus. Some scholars thought that Jesus didn't exist, but no serious biblical scholar. Yeah. Christian or not okay. thinks that anymore. But speaking of biblical scholars who are serious, um were you moved by that? By that the Shroud of Turin um updating their dating? No, because this it might not be all that it seems. I I okay, so Ooh. background. I grew up bom, bom, bom. it was actually a burnt blanket from Coles. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so dumb. Turns out that was perfect. they late. <laughs> All right. Move it along, boys. Move it along. <laughs> Cole's blanket that was laid over a burn victim. I grew up in the conservative fundamentalist <laughs> Christianity that wanted proof. We wanted, hey, you can be sure that your faith is real yeah. and that it's based on something real because we can prove it because look at all these things we found in archaeology. So yeah. the Shroud of Turin, that that was never a, something that we grew up with necessarily in that, oh, this proves it, but the needing an icon to, to back up your faith, I understand it. And there is a lot of archaeological evidence that that backs up some of the Bible stories, some of them not so much, but um, I do have a Bible scholar that I played before in this podcast talking about this very specific thing. Don't I think don't. you said archaeological. I'm, I might have. You did. Or <clears> hard. <throat> yeah. Spirit of Drew Brodden. In, in honor of Bo, Bo Jiden. Pert- <laughs> uh, do you have a little clip to share of someone who's talked about something? Thank you for spilling on the couch. You're welcome. Uh, if you're not on the video version of our podcast, then you will know that that you will not know that Zach oh, just spilled whiskey. Oh, they see whiskey. my notes now. Great. All right. Here we go. This is... I don't think people understand this. An ad. So you can go <laughs> ahead and kill that picture-in-picture, picture, Tyson, real quick. 
It's. St- I think the audio might still come. through. The audio is going to come through. You we'll, can mute it. Just, yeah. We'll just deal with. It's okay. No. It's all right. We're we're a just professional mute podcast it and run it, and then when it stops, I, I can't mute on. it when I'm sharing it to that. Oh, it won't let you in the corner. Oh, you're right. Yeah. This is my first time using YouTube, guys. Let me talk to you about the internet. It's a series <laughs> of ones and zeros. Do you uh, see it here? You do that. It might not. Could you do it? Oh, it doesn't want to let you do it. Hmm. It's a source of most current ideologies. And what this let course go. is going to show us is... I might you- actually edit that out. <laughs> okay, right, picture and picture. We're ready. Scientists Hit have it. made a chip. We're keeping track. Zach was right. Sk- it- Bring it up, homie. <laughs> Thank you, Tyson. Link discovery. All right, let's see it. After analyzing the Holy Shroud, a fabric believed to have wrapped the body of Christ after his crucifixion and has baffled the world for centuries as it bears a faint image of the front and back of a bearded man, which many believe is Jesus' body imprinted onto the fabric. Now, using new techniques would involving you pause x-rays, for a researchers can... You can leave it up there. Was the very beginning where the man is looking through the mic, is that just for entertainment purposes? And the It's like CSI, Sweden. What 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 it's, is that what, actually? What it is, is I'll tell you because I don't Please. use. So when you use CSI Sweden, <laughs> there was a <laughs> CSI Sweden <laughs> that should be noted. Thank you for calling that out. I missed that one. I think the clues are pointing to Jorgen. He might have done the murders. <laughs> Let's go for a sauna. <laughs> it's time for us to go have uh, some cheese. And, and did you pick this up from Coles this afternoon and burn it? <laughs> Clearly, he doesn't know how to play the guitars. <laughs> Quick, head to Ikea, he said in a Swedish accent that he can't do. Um, he's probably using uh, EA. EA Sports is in the game. This podcast is in the game right now. It's e- what's happening. Uh, wait, go back. No, no. No, please yeah, he can, go, he back. go back. Go back. Go not to the commercial. It's AI clipping is what yeah, they're using. Okay. It's clipping. Okay. And they add extra pictures oh, to spruce yeah, it up. Yeah. Here we go. For let's entertainment w- purposes. Let's, for let's, our, let's watch it together in its entirety. Scientists have made a chilling discovery. All right, let's see it. After analyzing the Holy Shroud, a fabric believed yeah. to have wrapped the body of Christ after his clipping. crucifixion and has baffled the world for centuries as it bears a faint image of the front and back of a bearded man, which many believe is Jesus' body imprinted onto the fabric. Now, using new techniques Only involving Jesus x-rays, had a beard. researchers can confirm Jesus it was manufactured around 2,000 years ago and it's believed that Jesus lived. Wh- so as Wait. one might expect from the Daily Mail, this is just a sensationalistic misrepresentation of research, and specifically research published in this 2019 article and said in it. this 2022 article, both of which were published in the open access journal Heritage. So you can look These up. articles don't claim to have confirmed that the Shroud of Turin is 2,000 years old. What both of these articles claim is that if you apply an experimental method for dating old fabrics known as waxes, which is an initialism for for wide-angle x-ray scattering, the results are consistent with a 2,000-year-old piece of fabric. Now, I'm not an expert in this. There are not many experts in this methodology because it is pretty new. It is experimental. So that raises an issue in and of itself. But there are a few other things to note. One, these articles both require that a certain calibration of both temperature and humidity be pretty consistent over multiple centuries for the results to actually indicate that the shroud is as old as they want it to be. Second, the majority of the authors of these two articles were also the authors of a 2017 article arguing that the blood on the shroud is consistent with someone who was tortured. That was subsequently retracted because there were significant criticisms of the findings and the journal editors decided that the data did not support the conclusions of the article. So the majority of the authors on these two studies have a history of going beyond the data in trying to prove the authenticity of the shroud. And those scholars are also rather committed to the authenticity of the shroud. In fact, one of them claimed that in 1998 they had a personal revelation confirming the authenticity of the shroud while they were standing in front of it. But we don't really have any expert responses to these papers yet, so we don't have a lot that we can say, apart from the fact that this conflicts with the consensus among scientists that the shroud is a mid-14th century 
mystery forgery, and the shroud first pops up in the historical record around 1354 in France. And in 1989, radiocarbon dating found that it dated to the late 13th to the mid 14th century CE. So most likely, this is a medieval forgery. Now, as with all things related to dogmas, there are going to be people who insist that the academic consensus is misguided or it is based on lies or improper methodologies or things like that. But the argument that still convinces the majority of scholars based on the data that are available to us today is that the shroud is a medieval production and does not go back to the time of Jesus. And the fit for today's year is the gambit. All right, that's how it oh closes everything. He was always a. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want him to know <laughs> dog the, bathing. The experts are here, so we're here to speak on this. Zach, <clears throat> what I like about Dan McClellan, which I didn't mention his full name, uh, he's from the Data Over Dogma podcast. Oh, nice. He is a uh, Bible scholar. Uh, he, his main thing is the consensus, the scholarly consensus which he confesses does not equal this is exactly correct. Sure. It's just where we're at today. Where most scholars think the data goes. And why I'm drawn to him is because I'm coming from a, a place where it's like, oh, people that go against the Bible or have scholarship that seems to go against my interpretation of the Bible means they're just trying to trash the Bible and where, where I've come to, and I, it's very refreshing, is like, no, most people don't have the agenda of like, I think these people exist where it's like, I'm going to disprove the Bible or I'm going to prove the Bible. Sure. And you eliminate any data that, that gets in the way of that. But, but generally, from hearing from a lot of scholars, Bart Ehrman, Dan McClellan, others, N.T. Wright is a great one that's more on the evangelical side of things. They're, they have their lenses they're looking through, but they're also just trying to see what does the data say and so i think we can be okay with that as christians maybe this isn't shocking to you guys but it's it's terrifying to my 13 year old self <laughs> well my question i would have two things that i'm thinking about and that is um one why does it matter um like oh hey we found this and it might be it's like okay at the end of the day are you trying to say that like you believe that Jesus died and rose, are you still trying to prove that to other people? Like, what? What's the or are you? What trying does to, this matter? Do you, you need the shroud of Turin, kind of a thing, right? Or do you want to sell this shroud for millions of dollars to the you know Roman Catholic Church? Like, if it's a forgery, I, I I'm asking this rhetorically because I don't think it's going to shake any of your face, but. For some people that look for those like, oh, this is new proof, and then it gets pulled, the rug gets pulled out from you because the scholarship dictates, or eventually the science becomes too overwhelmingly overwhelming to accept. I mean, the flood. So Mount Ararat and the mountains of Ararat, where the ark supposedly settled. I grew up uh, watching or and seeing that. Well, this woman. I don't know if I should Hurry mention up, her name. Hurry up, Zach. Andy's I yawning. I don't know if she's... Yeah, energy, Andy. We're podcasting. <laughs> Just because it's not good for you doesn't mean it's not good for me. I watching some old lady talk about old things. I'm not going to mention her name, but... On the old TV. I went to this... It was an apologetics-driven, we archaeological basis for defending your faith kind of a thing. But looking back, I didn't think this way back then. Looking back, she probably owned multiple Subarus. She was a robust woman rugged wait what does that mean probably she was so big that she needed two cars to get oh, got it both were subarus <laughs> let the listener you know what the uh, connection between subarus and people are right we you know they're rugged Tyson, they're, they're fun out. cars rugged likes no, the outdoors um, so can i just i i like where you guys are going with this and the reason being is good because we don't know where we're going no i so I am Can not. You tell us where we're going. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 okay. So I would consider myself not a rookie Christian, but you know, I'm I'm not someone that grew up. Um, you know, I wasn't raised in a house of the Lord and that kind of stuff, right? So I've always been fascinated when they did find something that points back to the Bible, as like you're saying, Jeff. Why does it matter for people like me? It's kind of like, oh wow, it's even more proof that. 
this is a historical book, mm. a document. This did really take, take place, and here's something that my doubtful mind needs to kind of grasp and have a tangible thing that happened, right? I don't know. True. And, That's good. And when I and when I saw it, just specifically when I saw this video, um, I mean, I wanted to be like, let's reverse go back and look at the actual picture because the hands are crossed in front of the body. <laughs> and I'm thinking there should be holes or there should be, you know, there should be some, sure. you know, some evidence um, of things that we know, you know, being crucified, um, not me, but just through the, the wrists. Um, anyway, I get what you're saying, Tyson. Um, and I don't, I mean, I, and I don't want to discount that. I mean, but ultimately, I'm like, I, I believe so. Whether they show me a shroud or not doesn't really matter. Hmm. The, I'll, there's a there's if Scott was here, he would challenge you in a mean way, Tyson. Bring it. And here's what he would say: He's like, "Oh, can I put on my Scott hat for a minute? Can I make him a bad guy?" Yes. Sure. <laughs> there he goes. I love you, Scott. Love you, Scott. Call me. I don't know why you guys are just, Scott never listened to the podcast. It's okay. Scott, yeah. Scott would, here, here's what Scott would say. Oh, is it not enough that the, the most verified piece of ancient literature in history, is that not enough for you? The Bible, that is. That you need additional artifacts to, to help bolster your, your indicators of faith. That's what Scott would say. I would not say wow. that, Tyson. <laughs> Some say, you know. Some say. No, but it, the charitable way to say that is like, um, I, th I think that, uh, yes, I like you. I, I'm not I'm not moved by a new artifact. The Dead Sea Scrolls val validation of those things, is not, I'm not moved by those. Um, uh, the f uh, parts of the Bible that are, I think extra convincing to me are, are when, when it paints humanity and Judaism not in a good light. Mm. Like people, people who are writing history about themselves. You like uh, the Jews looking bad, Andy? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> well, I think it. Dennis Prager, a well-known Jew, would say that that is an indicator. That a well-known self-hating Jew, <laughs> everyone knows it. Would himself say that this is uh, this is likely an indicator that it's accurate, that it's that it's true, because um, it's it's not in their best self-interest to present themselves in negative light. There are parts of that for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I like that. It's not like perfect. That. It's not flawless logic. You no, can, you can poke holes in it, but in general, like. And that between the fact that there's like uh, estimated over 400 authors of the Bible. Yeah. It's corroborated in other areas too. Is there shared mythological origins? Yes, there or, are. Or maybe even there's arc, 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 archetypical, arc, archetypal, archetypical, archetypal. Some characters in the Bible, there are a lot of scholars that think Abraham is an archetype and wasn't a historical figure, which maybe would freak a lot of Christians out that need the Bible to be perfect front to back. But it's, it's one of those things like does you mean they need it to be historically perfect, perfect, accurate back front to back, which is not the way that the Bible is written. Yes. And, and so that's, that would be my caution coming from the environment of kind of like Ken Ham is, is, if you can't, if you don't get Genesis one right and you misinterpret it, which means it's it's literal, a hundred percent, you can't get the gospel right. You know how I feel about that. You, Tyson, what? will you flash up the screen real quick? Cue a fart noise. I'm going to show you exactly how I feel about that. Oh, did we lose it? There we go. No, it's coming. Here we go. All right. Thank God I don't have any weird windows open. <laughs> it says it's it's sharing up there. Why is it not sharing? Oh well. This was a moment that could have been special. It was going to be good. Why is it? Why isn't I doing it? It says it's on your MacBook. I'm seeing the MacBook. I don't, I don't see. Yeah, it's okay. It would have been awesome. I, I believe you. I had a sad dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I appreciate that, Tyson. And I I think the good news is, like, they, scholars didn't think David existed in reality, but there was a coin found in the not-too-distant past that 
was like a dated to the time of around where King David would be and had his image like a moniker or whatever. The yeah, yeah, yeah. We've all seen all the Indiana Jones movies, Zach. We know that it, it all was exists. the original Bitcoin. And you're not supposed to look <laughs> but, at the Ark of the Lord, or if, else you'd be melted. If you look, if you're looking for the Bible to be proved 100 percent by all the archaeological data, you might be disappointed. So don't look into it. But the good news is, as a deconstructed, still considers myself a Christian. The my touchstone is agape love, the self-sacrificial love of a man giving himself up, even though he didn't deserve it. Like that will change the world if you do that, you do that, you do that, and we teach our kids to do that. Yeah, and that expands. So at the very least, I know that doesn't go far enough for some Christians, but that's my touchstone, which means if the data is like, oh, this story wasn't true in the Bible, this story is hyperbole, this story is some historical elements, like I'm not thrown by that anymore in a way where that would have thrown me off and yeah. I, mm-hmm. I would have become an angry atheist at, if it happened at the wrong time. But Ooh. Andy, you, used, you used the word touchstone a lot tonight. I don't actually know if I know what that word means, other than a 1980s uh, production company. That Touch me movies. and find out. Yes. Oh, oh man. <laughs> Where, where's your stone located? Okay. Uh, can we slide to. <laughs> Where are we sliding, Andy? We're going to slide. <laughs> slide to listener comments. All right. Oh, by All the right. way, do we have any new subscribers? Uh, sh- you know, I'm going to shout out one because. It's just such a beautiful thing, and I really appreciate him. Justin Winsbro. Hey. And guess what? He's been a winner since the beginning. Oh, he wins, bro. He's the winningest of bros. Wait, are you? He wins, wait, bro. What do you mean by that? Justin wins, bro. He wins, bro. He wins, bro. Okay. Yeah. Just like this podcast. I thought you were saying he was an name? original way back. I don't know who, okay. he, who he is. All right. No. But we do. Yeah, he wins. Okay, we had uh, on last week's episode with Paul Gibbs, um, there was some great commentary that came through, and a uh, longtime listener, longtime commenter, Paul Millsap, thank you for chiming <laughs> you in. Mean you Dave sh- Millsap. Yep, Paul Millsap. <laughs> Paul Millsap, former forward for the Utah Jazz. <laughs> That's not you, Dave, is it? <clears throat> okay. Uh, Dave Millsap, you shared a lot of uh, information in your in your comment. And I Which would, we appreciate. And I would recommend our viewers to go check it out. Go read what you said. We can't share all of that. But here's where I will skip to. There was a good one in there. You had a section in here at the end and you where you're talking, uh, referring to our, our guest, Paul Gibbs. You said, in quotes, Christian-centric equals... I pursue my vision, do what God wants so I can have a blessed life. Versus kingdom centric, in quotes, equals I pursue God's kingdom so I can give God what he wants. And then he's, I think he's speaking to Paul at this point. Paul Gibbs, nine books for sale. Are they all available as free downloads? I wonder as Paul of Tarsus sent his letters to believers as guides on how to live life according to God's will and the scriptures, how much he charged for each letter. Wow. Good point, Dave, not Paul Millsap. Or is it? However, how much did he charge for those tents he was making? Bro. <laughs> <laughs> I I love I love Dave and I love the time he puts in these comments. It's good. Never stop, David. Uh, but it is I I disagree with I, I don't know. This is if this feels different than I get a pastor of a church who's making a salary, which I, the way the modern church works, that's a different conversation in terms of how people are con- compensated. I almost said constipated, <laughs> <laughs> but that makes a difference too. Different conversation. I I struggle with that and I have problems with the amount of money we pour into just Sunday morning services. Sure. That being aside, like being an author and somebody that's trying to do good, but also support their family by writing books and stuff, I don't see it as taking advantage of people. And C.S. It, Lewis sold his books. Yeah. yeah. What, I, an, what an asshole. I didn't know we were going to comment on uh Yeah, we do it feedback. sometimes. Okay. Okay. A few, few quick others. Did uh, you just rebuke Andy and I? Was it, was, it was lengthy. Continue. Oh, okay. Bahari Salong Emmanuel. Great to watch and hear this conversation. You guys are the best. Nice. Thank you. 
Uh, Cam Smith, not a bot. LOL. Cam Smith. <laughs> He's full of it. Triple exclamation mark. JK, LOL. Cool pod. Thanks for bringing him on. It was an encouraging listen. I agree, Cam Smith. And then the last one, which is Craig Ragsdale. 8132. It's almost like modern day churches care more about your weekly attendance over your heavenly attendance as if the two Amen. were hand in hand. I'm not going to open this can of worms. What is heavenly attendance? I'm not. We're not going to open okay. that can of okay. worms. I might go home and get some heavenly <sighs> attendance. Whoa. I'm just talking about the drugs. Oh. Okay. <laughs> it's not the marriage. I'm just kidding. That's not true. It was for comedic effect. I love you, boo. Gentlemen, this has been a delightful episode. I'm glad that we got to uh, share this time together. I don't believe you. Thank you for for, uh, producing, Tyson. You were only fired once, I believe, which isn't too bad for a rookie producer. Um, All right. On all the socials, job, you, can, you can catch us, uh, listeners and viewers, on all the socials at Bros Bibles Beer. We are available on all the podcasting platforms. Please like and subscribe on YouTube. And if you've found that you think this is interesting or any of our episodes are interesting, and uh, we ask this, share it with one person. If you want to go above and beyond and leave us a review on uh, your favorite uh, podcasting apps, that's really helpful for us as well. One more thing, if you want to go above and beyond, I'm selling football squares <laughs> for <right>. uh, NFL. <laughs> okay. Zach's out here. He's about to kill him. That's it. You were told no more. <laughs> Three. That was your maximum. Four. Jeff. Zach. I am Andy. This is Bros, Bibles, and Beer. Grace. And Tyson. And Tyson. Grace. Peace. Cheers. Cheers. Super. Super sexy. Look at two of our legs. I mean, it's four legs. I'm trying to see each of you. How come you don't show your legs more, Zach? Because I'm classing this shit up.